Today I'm going to talk about what to do when you so badly want to help someone else. You just feel so much empathy, you want to solve their problems, you want to make it all better, you want to fix it for them. So this will apply especially to ISFJs, INFJs, and perhaps some NTPs as well, with our uh, FE function being lower on the stack. And really to anyone who is kind of an empath, who feels a lot of compassion and empathy and, and wanting to, to fix things for people. This is close to my heart because my mom is an ISFJ and she's always been kind of the embodiment of compassion and wanting to make it all better for me. And, um, and I see how much suffering that causes her sometimes, especially as I've been getting older and I've been relying on her less. And I've been telling her, you know, I know you care about me so much, but I have my own support network now. I have my own partner, my own friends, and, and I feel well held. You know, I feel okay. I feel resilient even when it's challenging. So, so don't worry. You know, you don't have to worry about easing my suffering for me. And, um, you know, the, there's a practice that I think for people like that, for people like you might be, um, there's a practice that, that can really help here, which is to really see the resilience of this other person that you want to help. And depending on your spiritual framework or, or lack thereof, you, know, you might imagine this as something like every human has a bright light inside them. Maybe it's a beautiful soul. Maybe it's a piece of God. Maybe it's um, a higher self. Maybe it's just their own internal psychological resilience. You know, however you think about this, it's this idea that really seeing the how capable all of us are. You know, here is um, here is a human who has managed to get this far in life already, and life is pretty hard. You know, it's pretty challenging out there, especially to to be an adult in today's world and figure out how to navigate all of the, all the challenges every day. Um, so they, they've been doing it, you know, even if they're struggling a lot, even if they're struggling very deeply, even if they look very depressed or sad, um, you know, they've been doing it. And there's really this, this beautiful idea that I, I love in Buddhism that each of us has Buddha nature. The goal in Buddhism is not to learn something new, to become something new, to kind of become like the Buddha. The idea in Buddhism is that you already are the Buddha. Deep down, that is your inner nature. That is your true self. You already are this beautiful, awakened being that knows all the answers, that is enlightened. But in Buddhism, we talk about illusion. You know, we get trapped in illusion, like the matrix. You know, you think the matrix is the real world, but you have to wake up from the matrix. You have to get free of it to see the truth. And so it's the same in Buddhism, that that's kind of the goal of practice, is to break free of this illusion that you are this limited, flawed self who doesn't know you know, how to deal with challenging emotions or whatever it is, and to see through that, to, to break through that illusion and see this inner light, to see your Buddha nature inside, that you already know what's true. You already know how to handle yourself, how to be resilient. That's inside you. And so all the practices are really just to help you see your, your already awakened self. Um, and so, you know, I think that's, that's a great thing to imagine when you look at other people, to imagine each person you see is a Buddha. They just don't know it yet. They just have forgotten. They're trapped in illusion, so they can't see their own light. But you can. 
you can see it for them. It's, it's like the, the first way that you can help someone else is by seeing them for who they truly are. To remove judgment that you have of them, to remove this feeling that you know better or that you have the answer for them or that they can't help themselves, that you need to help them. The first way you can truly help them is by seeing past that illusion and seeing that they already have the tools. And, you know, I might give a bit of a different message to someone who was more of a narcissist, more arrogant, you know, not very empathetic. Then they probably do need to practice uh, a little more compassion, a little more empathy, a little more, you know, kindling the fire in themselves to want to help others. But if you're still watching this video, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you already have that. You already have a, a fire burning bright that makes you want to help, that makes you want to be of service to reduce the pain in others. And that's wonderful. And so, um, you know, that's why the hard work for you looks a little different. It's less about trying to motivate yourself or trying to see the... Um, see that someone deserves empathy you know you already feel that you already kind of feel their pain and you want to help so your work is on the other side to actually kind of reduce this this graspy feeling that it has to be you you have to fix it and instead manage yourself manage your own emotions to say it's okay i'm going to calm myself and trust that they're going to figure it out I was struck, I was just on this seven-day meditation retreat at a Zen monastery, and the head teacher who has been practicing for 50 years, he told us about his own practice. You know, what does he struggle with? What does he have to work on after so many years of practice? And he said that he really has to work on remembering that his job as a teacher is not to fix people. And he has all sorts of people coming to him with huge challenges. You know, they've been diagnosed with, um, you know, a, a very challenging disease, or, um, you know, they've just lost a loved one, or they have relatives in a, in a war-torn area. You know, these deeply, deeply challenging, painful things and and he you know he is such an empathetic human he's cultivated such a deep state of awareness with his zen practice that he can see that we're all in this together that we're all interconnected and so he has such great compassion for all these living beings he doesn't want them to suffer you know that's really his his vow in life is to try to reduce suffering in the world and yet he has to keep reminding himself that he can't just fix it for them. You know, he can show them the door, but they have to walk through it. And if he decides that his job is to fix it, his job is to make their pain go away, then that's counter to his own Buddhist practice. Because then if they don't change, if it doesn't go away, then he's going to be disappointed. He's going to suffer. Right? Because he's attaching to a certain outcome of them feeling better. And Buddhism is all about lessening your attachment. <laughs> it's about holding things more lightly. So you can have a strong vow to try to be compassionate, to try to reduce suffering. But you have to recognize that at the end of the day, we can never control anyone else. Even if it's trying to control them for good. Even if it's trying to change them in a way that we think will make them feel better. We can't do it. And if we think we can, it's going to cause suffering to us. So in your effort to try to ease the suffering in them, you're actually going to cause suffering in yourself. And so the, the only reasonable approach here is to, you know, use your compass to align with your values and follow them and say, yeah, I, I really do care about this person. I want to help them. But you can't hold too tightly. You can do your best and then you have to relax and just recognize, you know, they might make mistakes. They might stumble. 
and you can be there by their side, but you can't always fix it for them. You can't just make it better. And so, again, trusting their resiliency, you know, imagining that light inside them, inside them. Um, you know, if you're Christian, you could imagine they have a guardian angel on their shoulder that's always with them no matter where they go. And just trust that angel's got it, you know? And, uh, you know, if you're a complete atheist, just imagine they have this um, internal self-preservation drive that's biologically built in to preserve the organism, right? That's in there. And we humans are resilient. You know, I just went on this really difficult seven-day silent meditation retreat. And there were people of all sorts of levels of experience. Some people were very new to meditation. And I was blown away that no one left. You know, dozens of people. They all stuck through it to the end, even though it was very difficult. So that was just a reminder for me of just how resilient humans are. You know, we're adaptable. We can make it through things. And um, so try to trust that. Try to believe in people. And you want to help them so much, and that's how you can help them, by believing in them, by seeing their true nature. And just holding that in your body, holding that belief. And that's palpable. If you can look into their eyes and really feel, I believe in you, I trust you, they'll sense that from you. So imagine how helpful that is to feel you like a Jedi, you know, just sitting there so calm, so trusting, so believing in them. You got this. Imagine how much better that feels than, oh no, are you suffering? Oh gosh, I want to help. What can I do? Can I come over right now? Can I come over every day and check on you? You know, that, that doesn't feel as helpful, even though you think it is. And that was exaggerated. I, I don't mean to make fun of you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, this is really a practice for me as well, even though I don't consider myself a super empath as an ENTP. Still, I, I have to practice trusting my partner that when they're suffering, I have to believe that they're in their own process. They're on their own path. And they're growing. And I can be by their side. I can offer my help. And... Ultimately, I have to trust that they're figuring it out. They've got it. And so the last piece here that I want to name is that you have to take care of yourself. So when you're feeling these challenging feelings of, oh no, this person I care about is suffering. I need to fix it for them. I need to help them. That's wonderful. And don't make it about you. Don't make it about, I have to be the one to save them. I have to be the one to fix it, right? If this is truly coming from a compassionate, altruistic place, then allow them to fix themselves. Allow them to get support from wherever they get support. Maybe it's not you. And you have to deal with your own emotions. You might feel sad. You might feel frustrated. You might feel hopeless. You might feel like you're not doing your part. You're not being a good friend, a good mother, or a good sibling, a good partner, whatever it is. You might feel frustrated by them. Why don't they just let me solve it? I have the answer. And those are your feelings to deal with. So I invite you to notice how much of the suffering here is real that they're experiencing and how much are you causing in yourself by imagining that they're suffering so much and if only they would let you in, if only they would let you fix it. Right? That's your suffering to deal with. So I invite you to be compassionate to yourself. Wow, I'm suffering right now. I'm really sad right now. I'm feeling useless right now, and I can't help them. Give yourself love about that. And maybe you need to ask for support. <laughs> like, wow, my son is really suffering right now. Wow, my partner is really suffering right now, and I feel useless. You can ask your friends for support with that. You can give yourself support. And you can remember your inner light, your inner Buddha, your angel on your shoulder. Right? All that applies to you as well. So 
So just remember, you know, in this Buddhist view that everything is interconnected, all beings deserve love, all beings deserve compassion, that includes you. You deserve compassion too. And if you don't take the Buddhist view, if you want to take a purely secular psychological view, you can recognize that you need to fill up your cup before you can help others. You need to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you can put it on someone else. So you need to practice self-care and get your needs met so that you can be available if other people need you. And thank you for caring about others. All right. I'd love to hear how this video lands with you and if it sparks anything, if you've found anything else that works for you when you're feeling kind of overly empathetic <laughs> or, or helpless. Um, and I hope you have a nourishing day. Thanks for watching.